ordinary horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a haughty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you Silver? Hey! fly a jet. He's 12 years old and the fastest yet. He can loop the loop because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. <laughs> he's feeling his Cheerios. 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 That's a mighty good idea for you. Just make sure you eat a big bowl of Cheerios and milk every breakfast and you'll get go power too. Because a Cheerios breakfast is loaded with proteins, vitamins, and minerals. The very things that help build healthy bodies, strong bones, good red blood, and muscles. Why, they'd be the sort of breakfast you'd go for even if they didn't taste so good. And they do taste delicious. Cheerios are a real oat cereal, already cooked with that delicious toasted oat flavor. So that's for you. Swell-tasting Cheerios and milk for Go Power. Eat them every morning and you'll hear... He's feeling his Cheerios. The Martin Gang of Outlaws, led by the notorious Martin brothers, Casey and Ab, robbed the Allen City Bank and escaped after shooting three persons. <laughs> fled in an easterly direction, but in order to throw off their pursuers, backtracked and continued to the west. Seldom resting, eating hardly at all, the outlaws continued to ride for three days. Then when they and their animals were at a point of utter exhaustion, they halted. Oh, oh, oh. Casey Martin called his brother to one side and said, Yeah, but... If there was anyone following us, we'd shaken them off by this time. Yeah. yeah. Casey, we're in sad shape. The horse is almost finished. The boys are hungry. Yeah, I know, I know. So whether we like it or not, Eb, we have to take a chance on being seen while we try to get food and horses. Have any idea where we are? No, we've never worked this part of the country. The kid says he's been here before. He, he says there's a town called Dunmore, west of here. Oh, Few of us are going there with them while the rest stay here. We have to rustle up some grub and some new horses, and maybe something to drink. Ab Martin, the kid, and three other outlaws, including one called Johnny, reached the outskirts of Dunmore in the afternoon. Ab made a decision. Kid, there's no chance anyone will recognize you. So you go into town now and order the grub and look for the horses. Boys and I will go in when it's dark. We'll stay at some cafe till about 10 o'clock and then meet you. We'll hide over there among those trees till dark. The Lone Ranger and Toto in the wild hills to the north of Dunmore stopped at the gold mine of Prospector Jock McVeigh, a man they'd known for many years. They were surprised to see that the entrance to the mine was blocked by a massive round boulder, which Jock was trying to remove with no results. Jock, after greeting them, said, The last time you were here was a year ago, in the summer. Ah, it right after you start to dig here. I, I did a lot of digging, too. Kept at it all summer and fall. Must have dug 40 feet straight through that hill. 
right behind the rock. Uh, what's the rock doing there, lodged in the entrance? Man, do you know how it snows and blows once winter sets in up here? I do, Jock. The weather's really bad. Bad? It's the worst. Once the snow started, I scooted out of here. But first, I used my mule to help me push that rock again the entrance to the mine. Now I can't move it away. Well, stop worrying about it, Jock. Tonto, take the spade and start digging a shallow trench away from the boulder. Uh-huh, me do it. I'll use your pick, Jock, and loosen the dirt that's holding the boulder tight. Tonto dug a narrow trench from the rock to the top of a small incline that leveled off about ten feet from the mine entrance. Then when the boulder was loose, they rolled it along the trench, as a train might roll on a track. They stopped when the boulder rested on level ground. Jock McVeigh thanked them and invited them to eat with him at his cabin a mile away from the mine. But the Lone Ranger declined. Oh, no thanks, Jock. We'll set up camp as we always do. We'll not be too far away. Perhaps we'll see you in the morning. At that moment in Dunmore, Deputy Sheriff Rudy Carmack, breathless and pop-eyed, burst into the office of Sheriff Tom Wayne. Ab Martin! It's him, Sheriff. It's him, all right. I'm sure. What are you talking about? Ab Martin, the outlaw. He and three other fellas are sitting at a table over in Kick Glasgow's Cafe. But the report we got from Allen City said the gang headed east after they robbed the bank there. I don't care what the report said, Sheriff. Ab all Martin. right, all right, Rudy. Round up every man you can get. Do it fast. We're going over to the cafe and take those hombres. Come in to Dunmore right in the open, would they, huh? Come on, we'll show them. There were ten deputies with Sheriff Wayne and Rudy Carmack when they rushed into the cafe and covered Aunt Martin and his pals. Don't move, Martin. You're under arrest. Watch out, Sheriff. I shoot him, Sheriff. You're waiting two of them. Don't shoot again, Sheriff. We give up. You fooled us this time. Throw your gun in, Johnny. That's more like it. Pete, get those two wounded hombres to the doctors. Ab, we'll take you and your pal to our jailhouse for a while. Go to it. You never hold us there. No? You're right. Because we're putting you in a stagecoach and driving you back to Allen City, where they want you. We'll start looking for your brother and the rest of the gang tomorrow. Sheriff, I'm going after that stagecoach. Rudy Carmack hurried to the stable and sought out the owner. Josh, get your stagecoach fixed up, huh? The sheriff wants to hire it. Uh, sure thing, Rudy. Say, there was some excitement you had over at the cafe, huh? Yeah. Caught Ab Martin and another outlaw and shot two others. That's what we want the coach for, to take Martin and his pal to Allen City tonight. We figure if we leave right away, we'll get there... As Rudy Carmack right. talked, a figure yeah, standing in the shadows oh. seemed to melt away from the stable. The young outlaw, known as the kid, had heard enough. He hurried to where his horse was tied, Easy, mounted it, Come on, get it, then headed for the hills, and the place where he knew that Casey Martin and the rest of the gang waited. Casey, the trail that takes them to Allen City is the one we rode on today. Oh, those filthy, slithering rats taking Ab and Johnny like that. Well, they're not going to keep them. You're going to try to hold up the stage, Casey? We'll blast the stage and every tin badge rattler that's guarding my brother. Boys, get your guns and your rifles. Kid, we've been waiting here for more than an hour now. You sure this is the road they'll take to Allen City? I am, Casey. I checked when I was over here, but... Coming around the bend in the road. It's a stagecoach. There are four riders with us. Guards. There are nine of us. Boys, blast the guards first. Get up. Come on. Oh, Give it off. Oh, oh. The outlaw's initial burst of fire sent three of the guards tumbling from their horses. The fourth rider and the shotgun guard returned the fire. But the outlaw's attack was as relentless as it was unexpected. Bullets wounded the fourth guard and one of the lead horses on the coach. As the wounded animal fell, the other horses piled up and the stagecoach careening turned over. Driver and shotgun guard were thrown to the road unconscious. Hold your fire, boys. No more. Oh, oh, oh. Abs inside that coach, Ab and Johnny. We gotta get him out. We gotta get him out. All right. Well, Casey, we got Ab and Johnny out of the coach, all right. It's banged up bad. Not as bad as the sheriff and that deputy is. So what are you gonna do, Casey? What we plan to do. Get away from here as fast as we can. Uh-huh. 
Let's get Ab and Johnny onto a horse. All right. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Bobby is a boy of nine. He can really hit that line. He's the star because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 Good old Cheerios. They got go. So nourishing because they're made from oats with minerals, vitamins, and proteins that your body needs. Yes, indeed. A bowl of Cheerios and milk really starts your day off right. Does all sorts of good things for your body. Helps you have strong bones and muscles, good red blood, and healthy nerves. So every morning, take on a bowl of Cheerios and milk for real go power. You like that wonderful toasted oat flavor, too. Downright delicious. Come to think of it, Cheerios is one of the tastiest muscle-building foods you can eat. Try Cheerios and you'll hear... <laughs> He's feeling his Cheerios. Now to continue. The outlaws, high in the hills, had trudged on relentlessly for five hours. Casey Martin, leading the horse that carried his brother, called through the darkness. Oh, 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 Kid, I think you got us lost. Doesn't seem to be any direction to where we're going. I'm sorry, Casey. It's only more moonlight. Maybe I could... Casey. Boys, look there behind the trees. It's a light. Hey, man. It's a cabin, boys, you see? That means grub. Let's go there. Get it. Prospector Jock McVeigh in his cabin had lighted a lantern when he heard hoofs and footsteps somewhere nearby. He walked to the door and opened it as Casey Martin and the kid stopped outside. Oh, 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 well, who are you? And what do you want? Hi ah, there, Pop. Who's with you? Nobody, but I asked you a question first. No, no, geezer. Boys alone. Leave the horses. Come on in. Wait a second, you. Out of the way, old man. Why, you young whippersnapper. I'll bash your head for pushing me. Stop waving that lantern around like that. I'm getting oil all over the floor. Give me that lantern. Hey, hey, what's going on here? I'll break it over your head. That's what I'll do. Hey, what's up? Hey. Uh, the lame busted. Uh, you skivering snake. Hey, fire. The place is on fire. Casey, get out. Get out. We can't stop. Yeah, I know. Get away, everybody. Hey, look. Out of the cabin's on fire. Uh, who did it, Casey? What happened? <laughs> that fire caught on in a second. Did I told you to watch out? Where is that old geezer? Hey, hey you fire-setting devils. Where's that young... Ah, there you are. Here he's swinging for hey, me. Oh, oh. Ah, the kid's knocked out. The old loucher broke his head just for that. I'll, I'll give you the same. Are you? Oh. As Casey Martin's blow sent Jock McVeigh crashing to the ground beside the kid, the flaming cabin exploded as the blaze overheated a drum of coal oil inside. The flames are spreading. There'll be a forest fire. They got horse with ab on it, and let's get away from here. Can't stay here. Move back. <laughs> The Lone Ranger and Toto in their camp less than a mile away saw the flames, heard the explosion, and rode through the night to the scene of the fire. Oh, oh, oh easy, fella. Easy, fella. Easy, fella. It's Josh's cabin, Toto. There he is, over there on the ground. Ah, uh, me see him. Other man beside him. Let's drag them out of harm's way. Come on. Uh-huh. This is far enough. Again and I... Easy, Jock. Hey. Easy. You're all right. I'll bash your head. Oh. Oh, shoot. Lie still, Jock. You'll be all right. Other man. Bad shape, Kimosabi. Him not come too easy. What man is it? Oh. Young coyote, huh? I did that to him. Hit him with a sack full of gold nuggets. That's what I did. Jock, the fire's not going to spread. But it's too late to do anything about your cabin. So tell us what happened. Excitedly but briefly, Jock related the events leading to the fire. 
the Lone Ranger asked, Jock, are you well enough to look after this young fellow? I am. I'll tie him up. Just to make sure he doesn't try any funny stuff when he comes to. That'll be a long time from now, I think. Come on, Toto. Let's go after the others. Uh -huh. to a tree, then quietly made their way through the underbrush till they reached a spot near the group of men. They could hear the crook's words and phrases from time to time. There's no forest fire after all. Better go back and get the chip. Oh, he's a jinx. Let's get away. Wait a look at that. Light a match, somebody. Oh, uh, Gonna have to find a place to hide soon. Have some bad shape. When one of the men lighted a match, the Lone Ranger and Tonto saw three faces in the pale yellow flare. Tonto. That's Casey Martin. Uh, man with an outlaw, too. That's a gang every sheriff in the West is looking for. Uh, Toto, you ride back to Dunmore. Get the sheriff and all the help possible. Meanwhile, I'll try to join the Martin gang. Uh, Come back here a bit so we can talk more freely. The fleeing Martin gang, some of them still badly hurt reached a decision after a meeting of many minutes. The leader, Casey Martin, accepted it. All right, boys. We'll set up guards and rest here an hour or two. This is a bad place hey, to wait. 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 Freeze, wait. mister. Move and I'll shoot. Why, Casey? I came here to do things for you. He knows you, Casey. Sure I do. Now you too, Raffo. You, Gilligan, and Jamesy. Hey, who are you? How do you know us? Anyone who knows anything about real outlaws knows you, boys. Funny, I could meet you up here. What's the idea of the mask, stranger? Why do you fellows wear bandanas at times? People I know wear masks when they do a job. I'm just different enough to wear mine always. Never mind the talk. Maybe you're somebody we don't know. This isn't our territory. Mm, don't I know it? Now, look, it'll be dawn soon. This is a bad place to be congregating. It sure is, after shooting up a sheriff and his men. Setting fire to a place. Keep your trap shut. Huh? There's a hideout just a short distance from here, Casey. Nobody knows about it but me. I'm heading there now. I uh, heard there. you fellas. You have one where? Just over the ridge, in a cave. A cave big enough to hold this entire outfit, horses and all. Oh, well. <laughs> I'd like to take you there, Casey, if you and the boys want to go. If you don't want to, it doesn't matter to me. Casey, do what he says. I, I'm weak and need a rest. Yeah, me too. Well, I don't know Go what on, to... Casey. Oh, all right. I'm doing this for you, Ab. Stranger, you still haven't told me who you are. But a mask means only one thing to me. You're an outlaw, too. So lead the way to this hideout of yours. <laughs> Leaving Silver where Toto had tied him. The Lone Ranger unerringly led the remains of the Martin gang to Jock McVeigh's mine. There were lanterns inside, and the men lit these. Casey, give me some water, huh? Sure, Ab. Wait till I get my canteen. Well, you boys are settling down here. I'll get rid of the prince outside. Are you stay here, fellas? I'll be seeing Hey, hey, you wait up. Casey, the water, please. Huh? Oh, sure, Ab, sure. Here. Take some. Yeah. Easy uh, now, Ab. Uh, hey, Ab, did you get a look at that mask on yeah. there? Something about him I don't like. Uh, it's as if... Uh, wait a minute. Uh, I'm sorry, Ab. Hey, boys, I just thought of something. There's one masked man in the West who's not an outlaw. Get your guns ready. I'm going out and find out if this could be the hombre. Casey Martin, his eyes suddenly bright, ran from the mine into the night. Hey, you, masked man. Where are you, masked man? I'm over here, Casey. Huh? Yeah? Where? Hey, what are you doing with that boulder? What are you pushing it? Why, you double crosser, I know who you are. You're the Lone Ranger. that gun. Lone Ranger, that's who you are. Aren't you? Yes, drop that gun, Casey. No, I'll. Boy, boy. All right, take it. No. As Casey fell unconscious from the punch, the Lone Ranger ran to the boulder. He stood behind it and with a mighty effort pushed. The giant boulder in the groove made earlier rolled down the incline and slammed tight against the opening to the mine. <laughs> Strike right in the middle. 
Stop shouting. You're locked in there till the law comes. Go ahead. Push against the rock, all of you. But you'll have to squeeze through to get out. And it'll be one at a time. I'll have my guns ready, waiting. Late that morning, Tonto appeared with Sheriff Wayne, Rudy Carmack, and other deputies. Jock McVeigh, who was with the group, spoke first. How do you know, man? You have them cooped up in the mine just like Tonto said you would. Yes. Casey Martin tried to come out. You'll find him bound tightly over by the tree. His brother Ab is inside with the rest. They ambushed us last night. Almost killed me and my men. It's lucky we're tough. We survived. Aye. Me too. Burned the place down they did and bashed me. Only I bashed a little myself. That whippersnapper's head will be getting fixed by doctors for weeks. That lad was an outlaw. The kid, they call him. Well, they'll call him by a number now instead of a name. That is, if they don't hang him. He told us they have the Allen Bank money with him. Well, let's get it. Men, cover that opening. All right, Sheriff. A few of you work that boulder away from the entrance. All right. Now, if the masked man will only... See, the masked man, he was here a second ago. Where is he? Well, that Indian was holding a white horse. Uh, see, the masked man's on it. They're waving to us, and they're riding away. Aye, that's the way he always does. Works by himself till crooks are ready for capture. Then lets the law step in. Yes, I've heard them say that. And I guess it's why they call him the Lone Ranger. All right, men, let's open that mine. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Yes, champions are made, not born. That's the American way. Here's how one famous basketball champion got started. Jim Pollard of the Minneapolis Lakers. They called him Little Jumpin' Jim. Nothing short of the top for him. He practiced rebounds layups, too, and followed what the champs all knew. Wheaties for breakfast, so good for you. Today, Jim plays with lots of bounce, still eats his Wheaties every ounce. Jim Pollard started eating Wheaties when he was 11. Been eating them ever since, 21 years. Solid food, Wheaties. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties plate. Let's go, Jim, down the floor. Hey, hey, hey! He's on his way, on his way, he's on his way, on his way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Cause champions are made, not born. Yes, sir. Get on your way, get on your way, get on your way with Wheaties. Breakfast of Champions. The Lone Ranger, a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, is created by George W. Trendle. Produced by Trendel Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. The Lone Ranger is brought to you by General Mills every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time. Be sure to listen. This 